Hello everybody, welcome to this program, this new life. You know what? I believe you guys are going to be blessed because we're going to be sharing along the lines of loving God and loving people. And so as we understand how much God loves us, then we can love other people. So sit back, relax, and I believe you're going to be transformed and changed. See you later. You know, Pastor Paul has been speaking along the lines of encouragement, that we have life, we have you know, the ability to speak life and encourage people. Amen. Because we carry life inside of us. Amen. We have words. We can encourage people. We can speak the word of God over people. Amen. For the past two weeks, we've been uh, sharing. He's been sharing about that. Do you know that is the culture of new life, really? Amen. That is the culture of new life. That's the value of new, uh, uh, the values of new life. Values is what holds dear to us. This is who we are. And new life is all about life. All about life. Amen. L-I-F-E. L stands for love of God and compassion. Amen. I stands for the integrity of the word. Amen. We believe in the full counsel of God. We believe in the, in the word of God. Amen. The final authority in our lives. Amen. F stands for what? Faithfulness, family, community, or fellowship. Right? We are committed to God, His purpose, and people. And E stands for enjoying life. Amen. Aren't you glad that Christian life is not a boring life? Aren't you glad it's fun, amen, to be a Christian? Amen. So we believe that, amen, that we will enjoy life, have it to the full until it overflows. So we can share life to people. Amen. This is the value, the core values of new life. That's why we're here. This is what everything that comes out from this pulpit really you know, from God, the vision of the, of the house. It's all about life. It's all about Jesus. Amen. So if you need a title for this message, you know, it's loving God and loving people. Loving God and loving people. You know, life, the F there stands for faithfulness, family, and fellowship. We love God and we love people. Amen. We love God and that is the order, really. We love God and we love people. This is the culture of the kingdom. Amen. And in this house, we desire, you know, the kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We desire that. Amen. The culture of the kingdom to manifest in our lives. Amen. So are you ready? So let's start with Mark 12, 28. Loving God, loving people. You know, Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees, to the Sadducees, you know, to the teachers of the law. You know, and one teacher, one scholar of the law asked Jesus, teacher, which commandment is the greatest of all? And Jesus answered him, The most important of all the commandments is this, The Lord Yahweh, our God, is one. Verse 30, You are to love the Lord Yahweh, your God, with every passion of your heart, with all the energy of your being, with every thought that is within you, and with all your strength. This is the greatest supreme commandment. And the second is this, You must love your neighbor in the same way you love yourself. You will never find a greater commandment than these. Now, look at this. Jesus was speaking to the religious people. And Jesus quoted from Deuteronomy, really the greatest commandment. And here we can summarize that loving God wholeheartedly and then loving people fervently. Loving God wholeheartedly and loving God, rather loving people fervently. Now, let me ask you a question. Can you truly, in your own strength, in your own will, love God 24-7? You know, I say to you, it is going to be hard. It's going to be actually impossible because our love for God is fluctuating. Amen? It can go up. It can go down. It's never constant. But aren't you glad His love for us is constant? Amen? Aren't you, aren't you glad that His love for us is able to empower us to love Him? Amen. When we understand how much He loves us, then in return, we can now begin to love Him in response to His goodness and in response to His love. Amen. That is why God defined and demonstrated His love. Aren't you glad? Amen. He did not just define it, but He demonstrated it. Amen. The reason why we can now love God wholeheartedly is because we understand that God loves us wholeheartedly. Amen. The reason why we can love God with everything that we have is because God loves us with love, loved us with everything that we have, everything that He had. Amen. 
and everything that He has. Now, 1 John 4, 7, it says here, those who love by God, anyone loved by God here? Raise your hands. Amen. Do you know that this is one of the greatest revelation that you need to know? That you are loved by God. Amen. Foundational. Amen. Let His love continually pour from you to one another. Amen. Because God is love. Now, can you see the pattern? Those who are loved by God, let His love continually pour from you to one another. Everybody say one another. Because God is love. Everyone who loves is fathered by God and experiences an intimate knowledge of Him. The one who does not love yet has to know God, for God is love. Amen. Verse 9, the light of God's love shine within us when He sent His matchless, His only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through Him. Now look at verse 10. This is love. Now, in the, in the original, it really says this is how love was born. This is now how we understand love. This is the definition of love. He loved us long before we loved Him. It was His love, not ours. He proved it by sending His Son to be the pleasing sacrificial offering to take away our sins. Amen. So there is the definition of love that God loves us first. And then there was the demonstration of love that He died at the cross as a sacrifice for you and for me. Amen. Because true love is always demonstrated. Amen. It's not just defined. We don't just say love, but we put action to that love because there's always a demonstration. Aren't you glad He demonstrated? He did, he did not just say, I love you from afar, but He demonstrated it to you and to me by Jesus becoming one like us. Amen. So now, let's go to John 13. Jesus was speaking now, not to the religious people. He was speaking now to His disciples. At the upper, not, uh, at the upper room, yes, at the Last Supper. Okay? He was speaking to His disciples. And actually, at this point, Judas left already. Okay? Judas was set to betray Jesus. And so He's speaking to the eleven. And then He said, So I give you now a new commandment. Look at this. Love each other just as much as I have loved you. Come on. Just as much as I have loved you. Love each other just as much as I have loved you. For when you demonstrate the same love I have for you by loving one another, what is the result? Revival. Look at this. Everyone will know that you're my true followers. Did you see that? All right. Now, Jesus sets a standard of love before his followers. Jesus now gives the commandment to use his love as the standard of love, as the true measurement of love, as we care for one another. Amen. Because we cannot give what we don't have. Right? And so as we receive from Him His love, which is constant. Aren't you glad His love is constant? Amen. We wake up. Amen. His love is constant. It's always there because He is love. Amen. We sleep. The love of God is there. He gives His beloved sleep. Right? And so in every time, 24-7, His love is constant. Our part now is begin to know that and have a revelation of that and enjoy that. And in the process out of that overflow of His love, then what will happen? Then we can now share that love. We can give that love to other people. Amen. Do you know that the love of God was not just spoken to us? The love of God was demonstrated, yes, but also imparted to us. Romans 5.5. 5. Amen. And look at this. It says, and hope does not put us to shame. Are you hoping for something? Amen. You know, our Bible hope, the hope that we have is not, I hope it's wishful thinking. I hope it will happen. No, it is, I know so it will happen. You know why? It will not be put to shame because God's love. Because it is founded in God, I know, Lord, you love me. So I now can hope. I know, Lord, you love me. So now I know I have a bright future. 
That is my hope. Because you love me. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Aren't you glad it's basic? Amen. Because God's love has been poured in our hearts. It's already there. You just need to discover it. You just need to begin to know it. Amen. Through the Holy Spirit is going to illuminate. Amen. Who has been given to you and to me. You know, I love this next verse. You know, the reason why I'm big with the word response. All right. First John 4, 19. The Bible says we love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us. And in another translation in the Passion, it says, Our love for others is actually our grateful response to the love God first demonstrated to us. Amen. I'll say that again. Our love for others is our grateful response to the love God first demonstrated to us. Are you ready for some demonstrations of God's love? Amen. I believe we are in that place when God just wants to shower you with His love. But ladies and gentlemen, this, it, did not, it will not end there. Amen. God's desire is that we grow and overflow in that love and we can share it to others. Amen. So to me, through me. Everybody say that. To me and through me. Amen. I remember Jesus was speaking to His disciples, you know, after the resurrection and he was speaking specifically to Peter. Among you know, Peter denied Jesus three times. All right? And so Jesus prepared breakfast in the beach. All right? And he was speaking to Peter. And then he asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? And of course, Peter will say, yes, Lord, I love you. And notice what he said, what Jesus said. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. He did not say, love me back. No, he said, feed my sheep. Because the greatest demonstration of our love for God is when we love others. Yes, we can worship. I love worship. Amen. We can express our love to the Lord. But also, it's not just through words, not just through actions, but also through demonstrations. And the best way, the greatest example, you know, of our love for God is actually loving other people, loving our neighbor. So, Turn to your neighbor right now and say, neighbor, you're talking to yourself. Some of you are talking to yourself. No, talk to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, whether you like it or not, I love you. <laughs> really? All right. Amen. Amen. So the greatest demonstration really of God's love is us loving others. Amen. Because like what I said, you know, uh, we express our love to God with words and we demonstrate it through action. Same when we love people, we use words and we use actions. Amen. Let me say this. We release the nature of the world that we are most aware of. We release the nature of the world that we are most aware of. If we are aware constantly that God loves me. Who won't you really believe that? Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus, that you love me. Thank you, Lord, for your love for me. Then we release that. It's not going to be a duty. It's actually going to be a delight. It's going to be like not just, you know, a must, but it's actually a joy to release that love through words and through actions. That's why, you know, the song that we sang a while ago, Build My Life, you know, the chorus goes, Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. I love that. May we never lose our wonder. Amen. May we never lose our awesome. Amen. Hashtag find your awesome. You know, every day when you wake up, it's awesome to be alive. When I look at my wife, it's awesome to be with my wife. Amen. I hope, no, I hope she says that the same way to me. No, you know, when you wake up, thank you, Lord, it's awesome that I can go to church. It's awesome that we have a wonderful church, good facility. It's awesome that it's cold inside the church. Amen. It's awesome to be here right now with you, my friend, neighbor. 
right? Amen. It's awesome to be going to work. I have work. Thank you, Lord. It's awesome that I have money to pay my fare. Come on, find your awesome. Amen. Every day, just simple things. You know, find your awesome hashtag. That's original from this church, okay? Find your awesome. Amen. Begin to see. Lord God, thank you. You know, may we not lose our awesome. May we not lose our wonder. Amen. And then it says here, show me who you are and fill me with your heart. Come on, you want that? Many Christians love that, and it's true. Then what? Lead me in your love to those. So there is an expression. When we get filled, are you ready? When we get filled, there should be an overflow. There should be an expression. Amen. So two ways, two major ways really to love God. All right? And that is through our words and through our actions. It's perfect combination, really. Love God, you know, and love people through words and through actions. Now, Pastor Paul's been sharing along the lines of this. You know, when he said about the principle, you know, that we carry life. You know, what you believe will be known by your words, right? It will be known by your words because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, all right? In Proverbs 15 verse 4 says, a soothing tongue speaking words that build up and encourage is what? It's a tree of life, all right? And then, but a perversive tongue speaking words that overwhelm and depress crushes the spirit. All right, you, you and I, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge in it will eat its, eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. You and I, we've been given life. Amen. And we know this. You guys are well taught that, it's, that we have the ability to speak life. We have the power by God's anointing to speak to a dead situation and bring that to life. We can speak that to ourselves, to our dreams, to our bodies, but also we can speak that to people that are around us. Amen. And the beautiful thing here is that when God's word becomes our own, it carries power. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah, God's word, when it is given, when it, is, it goes out to him, from him, does not return to him void. Right? Isaiah says that. So my word shall not shall be that goes forth from my mouth, and it shall not return to me void. But it shall what? Accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So when we begin to speak God's word, His word in our heart, now real and revelation, and we begin to speak that to ourselves and to others, it brings power. Amen. It brings power. That's why we know that. We, sp we need to speak life and create an atmosphere for our children. Right? We need to encourage them. We need to speak that. And Im imagine this. Wherever you go, that is your platform. Wherever you are, that is your platform. You don't need a pulpit, you know, to speak life. In the everyday, we can say hello. We can just bless people with our words. Are you with me? So God is saying to you and me, Begin to speak life in situations. People need it. Amen. People need it, right? Speak good news. Speak the gospel. Let me, let me, uh, let me uh, give you an example here. Because our faith, the faith that we have, carries a different language, right? And so it, the faith, the words that we have builds up people, right? Builds us up. When God gives us his word, it builds us up, right? Amen. It encourages. It actually washes us. Amen? It takes away anything that hinders us from seeing Him. Now, look at this. For example, words like an empowering word, okay? Words, do you speak to people about your identity? You are blessed, man. You are, you are favored by God, right? You know, how is your day? Do you know that even though you go through this, God is for you, God? Come on, you know, that builds up people. Amen? You have phrases, you have words like, I'm proud of you. Right? Words like, you got what it takes. Right? You know what? You are important here. You're vital to this team. Amen? You know, I'm glad I am in your team. I'm glad I'm under Team New Life. Right? You know, I'm glad you are in my team. Amen? I'm glad that I'm in Sister Shadi Pastor Paul's team. 
right? Okay, when people hear that, I'm glad you're in my team. What does that do to you, right? Okay, I'm glad. I'm really blessed by you. Amen. You tell your neighbor, you tell your friend, I'm really blessed by you. Pastor Joey, I'm really blessed by you. Yeah, right? I'm really blessed by you. You've been here, huh? You've been here for the longest time. You're a, you're a pillar. So I dedicate this pillar to you. Joey's pillar, all right? No, really. And this is good. This is good. Look at this. When you hear somebody, somebody say this to you, I'm committed to help you reach your dreams. That warms your heart, right? That builds you up. I'm committed to help you reach your dreams. Amen. Imagine you are the bearer of that word and you speak it. What will happen to the person that you're speaking to? Right? And you can sense really the authenticity, the, the, re, the real words that are coming out from his heart. What will happen? It's going to build people up. It's going to help people, right? You know, we have words, simple words. You don't need to quote the Bible, actually. All you need to do is just carry that heart of love and then speak life to the people that are around you. Amen. And I believe the world is going to be a better place. Amen. Your world is actually going to be a better place. Amen. Come on, you can do that. Great. All of us. Now, question. Come on, you have words. Come on, you can speak. Okay. All right. All of, that, all of us can speak. You know what? We borrow we, we receive from God, and whatever, you know, we speak according to his, his word, what is alive inside of us, it will impart, it will build up people. Amen. Let me say this. The future is in the mouths of those who intentionally speak life. The future is in the mouths who intentionally speak life. We can speak life. Amen. Because God has spoken life to us. Amen. Words. And demonstration. You know that Jesus did that for us. Our God did that for us. You know, well, way before Jesus was, was uh, uh, well, he came, all right? Prophets begin to declare. Words have been declaring. God had been declaring about Jesus' coming. And Jesus' name means what? Savior, right? Savior. And so prophets have been declaring about the coming of the Messiah, then really proving of his coming is his love for us. And then when he came at the fullness of time, what happened? You know, Jesus demonstrated it to us. Amen. Today, God is still using words and God is still using actions to demonstrate how much he loves you and me. And I believe as we imitate him, we can use words and we can use actions. Amen. Good works to demonstrate his love to people. Amen. Number one, what is, you know, first thing is words express, you know, God's love. Second is actions that demonstrate definitely God's love. Mark 2, verse 1, it says, And when he returned to Capernaum, this is a story when Pastor Paul was sharing, you know, this story came to me. It says, When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home. And many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even at the door. So there, the, the house was packed with people, all right? And he, Jesus, was preaching the word. So he was preaching. He was speaking words to them. And they came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. Now, think about that. Isn't that amazing? All right, think about the picture, right? Four men carrying a paralytic, on, maybe in, in a stretcher, and when they saw that the room, or rather the house was full, they, that did not deter them. That did not stop them. They made ways. All right, they made ways. Now, question. They know the power of Jesus. They know that the paralytic, maybe man or woman, you know, I don't know if they're related, maybe they're friends, I don't know. But they know the only hope of that paralytic is there, somewhere there, the person that is inside that, that house. So they will make, they will do whatever to be sure, to make sure that the man, Jesus, you know, will meet, you know, the paralytic. 
because they know the answer is in that man, Jesus. Now question, when is the last time you spoke God's gospel, you know, God's love to people? You know, when is the last time that you brought people to church? When is the last time that you know some people, you prayed for somebody? Amen. We can be that, those four men. All right? Let me submit this to you, that you can, and I can be those four men. That if we know there is someone who needs a help, we can bring God's life, you know, to them. You actually don't need to bring them to church. You can be the church to go to them. Amen. You can bring hope. You can bring life to them. You can bring an encouragement. You can actually text them later, okay? Te text them and show, you know, call them and say, hey, I'm praying for you. You know, God, rem you know, remind me of you. What's happening? You know, can, we, can I pray for you? Well, you know, we can be those four men because we know only Jesus can meet them. Only Jesus can satisfy. Only Jesus can heal. Amen. And so, like those four men, it will not stop us from anything as long as we will make way so that we can bring our friend to Jesus. Amen. You know what happened there? It's funny, the story. You know, so the Bible says in another translation, it says, and when they had broken through, they lowered the paralyzed man on a stretcher right down in front of him. Come on. Right there in front of him. So Jesus was speaking words and then boom. <laughs> you know, wow. There's like production number coming down, right? But look at what happened. If we continue to read in verse 5, when Jesus saw, look at this. Jesus saw the extent of their faith. Wow, okay. He said to the paralyzed man, so Jesus saw the extent of their faith. Their faith, not even the, the faith of the paralytic, but their faith. Among you know, God will honor your prayers. Whoa, God will honor the prayers of a righteous man. Those who desire, God will honor that. And God will see your faith. So keep on praying for them. Keep on texting for them. You're t texting them. Keep on calling them. Keep on inviting them to church. Keep on being generous to them. Come on. Because when God saw their faith, when Jesus saw the extent of their faith, he now began, Jesus began to speak to the paralytic. He said, your sins have been forgiven. Is now forgiven. Right? Now, the, the, this, the Pharisees who are in the house said, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. All right? Then Jesus said, wait a minute. All right? What is better? What is easier to say your sins have been forgiven or I say to the paralytic, rise up and walk? Right? What is easier? So what did Jesus do? Of course, he spoke. Rise up and walk. And what happened? The paralytic rose up and walked. You know, because of those four men, not only the paralytic received physical healing, but paralytic also received spiritual healing. Amen. You do not know. Come on, let's praise God for that. Let me say this. You do not know the impact of your actions. Amen. You do not know. Don't, don't underestimate you calling people for the purpose of wanting them to know Jesus. You do not know, right? You won't really know. You know, your acts of generosity. You won't really know, you know, your tap in the back, your embrace. You won't really know the impact and the effect of that to another person. Right? I remember when we were passing through something. You want to share the story? Okay? Okay. Come on. You are good at telling stories. Okay, Miley. Okay, you caught me there. Okay, anyway, it, he, he was talking about the small things that you can do for people, you know, and not necessarily spectacular, supernatural things, obviously, but just the little things that you feel are so small, you have no idea how much that means to the person you are speaking to or blessing. Because one time we were really going through a really a financial uh, difficulty, and uh, I remember that our children, they were, you know, quite small at that time. They wanted to watch this movie. And, you know, we were like looking through our wallets. We did have enough to the watch movie. a movie. And so we did. We said, okay, we're going to go to the movie. Our kids want to watch, you know. So we did. And when we went to the movie house, 
Of course, they said, we want popcorn. This is the thing. We did not have money for popcorn, seriously. We did not have money in our wallets for popcorn. At that time, we couldn't even withdraw from the ATM machine because what was in it was below, you know, the, the minimum amount that you could withdraw. That's how bad we were financially. But here we were. We were just, okay, God, we're just going to watch this movie, you know, just make our children feel, feel good. So we're lining up in the movie house, and we saw some friends. Like, we lined up, and these friends were right in front of us. And we said, oh, hi, how are you, and all that, so-and-so. So So we start talking and moving through the line. When our friend got into the line, so they're buying their tickets, right? So we're we're there waiting. They turn, and they say, here, we bought you the movie movie tickets. Here you go. And it was so simple. I mean, just buying movie tickets. For them, it was like, let's just bless them for movie tickets, but they had no idea that we didn't even have money for popcorn. But now, because they bought us the tickets, we we seriously told our children, now kids, we can buy popcorn. I mean, isn't that simple? But it meant a lot to us because it showed us that God cares. It showed us that God cares even for the smallest thing. You might be saying, well, Popcorn, come on, pastor, that's so small. But yeah, if he can take care of the small, he can take care of the big. If he can be concerned with something that is so small and seemingly insignificant, well, he can take care of the big things. Amen. So never underestimate what you do for people. Never underestimate your smile. Never underestimate the tap on the back. Never underestimate like, hey, I'll buy you coffee. You have no idea what people are going through. And God is going to use you to be a blessing to them, just to be that conduit. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on. Amen. Amen. So thank the Lord for that. You know, popcorn. Maybe someone needs popcorn. You don't know. But when was the last time... Through the generosity of your heart, you bought lunch for somebody. When is when was the last time you just you know paid the grocery of somebody or even the fare of a tax load or whatever? Amen. You do not know, amen. The impact that will do to the other person. Come on, amen. Let me say this: We owe the world an encounter with God. We owe the world an encounter with God, amen. It's right. It's nice, amen, to enjoy Christ. Christ in me. But let me say this, God, you know, allow us to enjoy Him for a reason. You know, it's not right to enjoy Christ in me without overcoming something. That's right. Amen. When you enjoy Christ in me, God positions us to overcome something, overcome fear, overcome, you know, uh, trouble, you know, or depression. When we enjoy Christ in me, it's not right that we don't overcome something. And also, When we enjoy Christ in me, it's not right not to share Him to others. It's not right to share Him to others. Amen. Not to share Him to others. It's not right. Because we are overflowing. We're enjoying, you know, and out of that enjoyment, out of that overflow, God's desire is that we position Him, position us to be able to be a blessing to other people. Amen. You know, I read somewhere, God is not calling us just to go to church. God is calling us to be His church. So wherever we go, we are His church. Amen. Christ in me and Christ through me. Amen. And I believe God is going to use each and every one of us. Look at this in, the, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. It says here, discover creative ways to encourage others. Creative ways to encourage others and to motivate them toward acts of compassion. Doing beautiful works as what? Expressions of love. They will know. You know, when the world does something for somebody, it always has strings attached. Amen. But when in the kingdom, you just do it as an expression of love. Amen. So it is real. Next verse, it says here, this is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together. As some have formed the habit of doing. In fact, we should come together even more frequently. And everybody will say, Amen. Look at this. Eager to encourage and urge each other onward. All right? As we anticipate the day dawning, as we anticipate the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, imagine that all of us come here eager to encourage others. 
and to, to help others move forward into the things that God has for them. I, we will all have a revival. This place is going to be packed with lots of people. We, we're going to have a problem. Amen. A good problem. We're having a problem right now with parking, but we will have more problem. But that's a good problem. Amen. Because all of us here, people come, they know that they, they will just feel love. They will be encouraged. Amen. Imagine that. Right? So tell, tell your neighbor right now. Talk to your neighbor and say, you know what? I love you with the love of the Lord. Why not just practice it right now? Come on. Just practice it right now. Encourage that person. Amen. Right? You have something to share. Amen. Tell that neighbor, I love you. Right? You love me. Yeah? We're a happy family. Right? So all of us, we have words. Imagine all of us have th that desire to come together and encourage one another. There will be an, a mighty move of God here in this place. God is going to move like never before. There will be a revival in the south of Manila. Amen. So God is saying to you and me, hey, you know, we have this opportunity today. It's not just a culture of the house, but it is actually the culture of the kingdom. And you and I, as we receive God's love for us, we now demonstrate that love to others. Isn't that simple? Aren't you glad? We are just what? We are just instruments. We are his mouthpiece. God loving us, and we are empowered consciously now loving others. Amen. Did you receive something today? Amen. Why not just lift your hands? Come on. Thank you, Lord. Father, as we lift our hands today, you see our hands today. Father, use us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us meaning and giving us purpose. Thank you, Lord God, for ministering to us today. And just putting, Lord God, us in a place of understanding that you truly love us and out of that love we can share your love to others and like what we've always hear it's blessed to give more blessed to give than just to receive and so i pray that that we will be conscious of who we carry inside of us of what we carry inside of us i pray that we will step out of our world and be involved in others that we will not just be concerned about ourselves because you, you love us and you are concerned about us, but also you want to use us to be involved with others. So today, Lord Jesus, I pray that you write these things in our hearts, that it's not just a tagline in church. It's not just something that we say as our culture or our value, but it is going to be real. And I thank you, Lord, as the heart of our pastor, Lord God, that this church will truly make a difference is making a difference and will continue to make a difference. I pray that each and every one of us, Lord God, this week will be conscious of what we have inside of us. Thank you, Lord. We receive you. We receive your love. We honor you. We love you. We thank you in your name. Now quickly, put down your hand. I'm going to pray for people who have not received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Talking about God's love. Do you know when you understand God's love, it gives you meaning. It gives you purpose. When you begin to understand and receive God's love, it takes you to a place of selflessness wherein you now begin to think of others because God has thought of you, right? You know what will happen? It's going to put meaning to you. It's going to save you and understand that you, you're going to have an understanding of your destiny, why you're alive in this place. You're alive today. So if you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I don't know, maybe this is your first time or maybe not, but you have not experienced that new birth, that you have accepted Him in your heart and confessed Him, and com confess him with, your, with your mouth, I believe this is the time of your salvation. So can I have everyone just close their eyes for a bit? And if you are here and you're not sure that you have Jesus in your heart, you have no revelation or an understanding or have not received Him as Lord and Savior of your life, well, this is the time. Can you pray this prayer with me? Let us pray. Congregation, why not just pray this prayer with them so that we can encourage them, okay? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank You for loving me. Thank You for proving how much You love me. 
by sending your son to die for me. Jesus, I open my heart's door to you. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Today and forever, I receive your love. I receive your life. Thank you today I am saved. And most of all, I know that I am loved. Thank you for this new life that I have in you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, congregation. Let's thank the Lord for those people who received Christ. Amen. Wow. What a reminder, amen, that we understand how much God loves us. And when we know truly out of revelation that He loves us, then what we receive, we can give to other people. And I believe the world is going to be a different place because we have people like you and me who understands how much He loves so that we can love other people in return. So step, you know, outside of your comfort zone. Why not begin to encourage people, love on people? Why not just, you know, give them, a, you know, maybe a text or a call and tell them how much, you know, you appreciate them. And I believe they're going to be blessed by it. So thank you for joining us and hope to see you again next time here at This New Life.